As a native Londoner, the name London Field strikes the fear of God into me. So I came here with a degree of trepidation, but I'm really glad to see there's flat white coffee houses everywhere. It's been gentrified. And it's my real pleasure today to be visiting and doing a cribs with Carly Paradis. Hiya. Hi. How, <laughs> How are you doing? Nice thanks so much for having us. Oh, thanks. Come on in. Brilliant stuff. So how long have you had this place for? Uh, this I got in January. Oh, right, so. Yeah, January of, of 2017, and then um, had to actually build build a studio with it because it was just a bare. Oh, right, it was uh, like a shell. It was a shell, right. exactly. So got, yeah, like sort of six inch soundproof walls. Well, built. I've just noticed. That's oh, quite, yeah. And then <laughs> you've got the. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's great. So you've got the, the, um, the double windows in there. Um, yeah, and so that that took a while to do that. So, so you 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 so that's just the actual building, isn't it? Yeah. But you come in a bit. And, yes. On the walls, but and the floor is. Uh, the floor, I just got a new floor put Great. in because it's all cement below. Fantastic. So, so it's like an old uh, warehouse or something. Yeah, it used to be literally a laundry building where okay. they would do like massive laundry loads <laughs> for like Fantastic. commercial stuff like it. Amazing. Well, it's a yeah. lovely light space and. Um, yeah. It's it's not completely dead, but I'm I'm not a fan of working in completely anechoic yeah. environments. Really. Yeah, me as well. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I'll probably get some base treatment put in, um, and just sort of, you know, as you as you work, you kind of your ears can pick up um, if you need to put anything else. Absolutely. In. Yeah. So should we start with wonderful looking piano? So this is where for me this is where I began all my all my projects in music. Okay. Um, and yes, uh, you know, sketch, sketching out themes and ideas and that, um, this is my go-to. To right. Start. And are you a piano player originally? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and I was actually in an indie band in Canada as well. Okay. Um, so I'm into, you know, pop and rock and that stuff as well. Fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, it, it sounds like an idiotic question, but you know, f there are many people who actually haven't ever played a, a real, Right, piano. Right. And why for you uh, is there a difference? Why do you come to this to sketch than say just working off a virtual instrument on um, your computer? I think because when I was, I started playing actually by ear when I was about four okay. and then I just, you know, I just really connected with the piano as, as an instrument to create. And then I, and then I started writing when I was about nine and for me it just was like this amazing feedback. You can feel, you know, you could mm -hmm. actually physically feel the bass. Mm -hmm. um, um, through your body, and it, you know it's a very large range where you can pretty virtually do do anything, and I, yeah, it's just so inspiring to Absolutely. me. Absolutely, yeah. I think that this is something that I'm, I'm I'm really glad that you said the word feel because I think that I think that we get so obsessed with like kit and gear and it being yeah. about sonics, mm -hmm. and actually. 50% of what we do is sound and 50% is feeling, you know. And if, sure. if, if you're generating an environment that gives you a good feeling, then you're going to write a bit of music, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah anything that inspires you. Absolutely. And you want to sit there for hours and hours. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so you have two KM184s. Uh, yes, so, um, yeah, so I use those to record sketches and, yeah, and sometimes I'll, I'll record for, um, for my projects. And so when you're kind of sketching, do you, do you have, I, I have terrible kind of, I forget what I've done instantly. So do, okay. do you keep things running or do you just, do you, do you just kind of work it up here um, before hitting record? Right when I start, I'll yeah. always have my iPhone. Okay. And so I'm like, oh, I love that. And then I'll just like immediately record Hello it, that, right. a voice message. Um, and then I also have my, my iPad where I've got Logic Remote. So I can sit here and record piano oh you're gonna have to show me that because I'm, oh, I'm yeah. still doing that and then running across it's so easy yeah okay. I can show you yeah <laughs> oh, brilliant stuff excellent so you you do sketches on your iPhone and then run stuff into logic and then what's the next step for you uh, and then from there I'll start expanding on the theme seeing if I can develop an idea melody or whatever it is and then I'll start to add different instrumentation to see what works what doesn't might add in textual layers and then from that sort of build and sometimes it's nice I know with line of duty after I wrote read the scripts the, for first season I started sketching and then I basically wrote the the bones of the outro theme from the oh, from wow. re yeah. reading the script by just piano and and messing about in logic 
Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing. So the piano, from a kind of career point of view, has been very important as well. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you, you were involved with uh, uh, Clint Mansell. And yeah, yeah, I was super lucky. Uh, in like 2006, I uh, obviously a huge fan of his work. Um, and I just reached out through the now antiquated MySpace. <laughs> and I reached out and messaged, and he actually wrote back. And, um, That's awesome. Yeah, and we exchanged music we were working on at the time. And then I went to LA for the first time in 2007 for like a film conference thing, music gotcha. conference. And we met for coffee and um, kept in touch. And six months later, he asked me to play at the Ghent Film Festival piano. And from that band that we performed there, we now tour worldwide with him with his soundtracks. And he also got us all to play on Moon which was an incredible experience. Oh, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And what, I mean, that's a, a score that's passed so many people by, but it's just such a strong, yeah. strong score. Oh, I Absolutely love it. Brilliant. It's great, and it just goes to show that if you catch a composer at the right time, things things can can happen. Yeah. If you catch them at the wrong time, it can be it can For be sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so I also like hearing MySpace success stories because Spitfire started on MySpace. Really? Yeah, Paul Thompson found me on MySpace, and we went to the pub, and... It's one of those things where, you know, you go to the pub and you talk about taking over the world and never do yeah. it. But, you know, it, it, it led on to something. So that's cool. magical space. Magical MySpace. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, you're not massively kitted up, but the kit you've got is all very lovely. This gear here, this is actually early 70s gear I got for Prime Suspect 1973. And oh, wow. so over here we've got a Maestro Echoplex. I think Beck's guitar player owned it before me. Wow, <laughs> that's think. a good name drop. <laughs> um, and so that's amazing because it's got the, you know, the tape underneath there and you can literally, you know, input sounds and then mess about um, while the tape is running and record and echoes and all this cool stuff. Um, and this is an HH amp from 1972. And what I did was I did a lot of reamping um, with uh, radial reamp, which is Canadian. Fantastic. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so I would I would either, um, I worked with Andy Dragazzi from Blue States and he, uh, he played some really cool guitar stuff. And so, you know, we would record through there or I would record and then reamp it. So it would come out the amp and mess about with these early 70s uh, phase Amazing. phasers, Amazing. Um, which are really fun. Um, so just to get that a bit of that tint, that sort of tone of that era. And I, I think that was pretty successful. This is hilarious. It's like, you got your speed and you got your balls for Maestro <laughs> Phaser. I guess this is like one of the first... Um, Stomp pedals. Yeah, it's like huge, but maybe they had like giant like platform shoes or something. I don't know. Yes, very possibly. And what mic are you using? Oh, so that one is a Copperhead by... Ah, so Telefunken. Telefunken. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's, that was really fun to play around with that. So everything goes into uh, what? What door do you use? You're on. You're on. Uh, you're, are you like waiting by your fingernails for the new Max to come yes, out? Yes, <laughs> I am. I am. Yeah, sort of a creature of, you know, when something is working for me, oh, I absolutely. use it, and then when I find my needs change, I will change. Um, so yeah, I'm holding out for a new Mac. <laughs> um, so that's why I've got like an older ensemble and do it happening right now um, and then I have a Neve here that I will um, record through uh, and then I had to get a standing desk because as we all know crazy deadlines you're sitting down you know for 14 hours a day sometimes so important for your back health Absolutely. to stand for um, oh, a portion I think I want one of these. Yeah. I stand and work, albeit like, because I don't have an adjustable list, but the reason I do it is because um, I fall asleep otherwise. So oh. I stand <laughs> just to, to punish myself and stay like awake. You need like a treadmill. That's really cool, that. And do you find you, you lift it up quite a lot? Um, yeah, I try to like come in in the morning and, and do it for a portion of the day mm -hmm. and then maybe sit the rest of the day just to mix it up. Awesome. And yeah. you're using, how do you find the vocals? I really love the vocals. I just, I'm a big fan of, of bass. I just love it so much. So they've got these awesome, uh, awesome Which bass. kind of, yeah. you, know, you know the mix is right when you can see them bouncing out. Really? Okay. <laughs> Tip taken. Um, but there's a, and there's also a little focus button where it will eliminate a portion so you can just have a little bit of a different mix there. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah, I really, really like those. And the crystals, are they? Oh, right. I've just always been a huge fan of rocks and gems since a kid. Okay. So I always tend to have a little bit 
So I've got some smoky quartz and some citrine over there and some pyrite. I just think they're beautiful and they're, very, they're inspiring to me. So. Fantastic. Yeah. The reason I ask is I always get filled with dread when I come into a studio with crystals because I was at a studio in America where they believed the ghost of Carol Carpenter kept on screwing oh stuff no. up. So they got some crystals put in and she's gone now. Apparently. Oh, wow. Okay, I don't think there's any ghosts <laughs> in here yet, but um, yeah. Fantastic. Now, you mentioned that you got kit specific um, for a project. Do you have a generic template or do you work with templates or do you work up a template for a project? How, how does that work? With um, you? I do. I work up a template for each project uh, just because you know, each one is, is different. The one I'm currently working on is quite quirky and electronic. So I sort of start from scratch. I mean, I, again, I always tend to start with a piano and then that piano will evolve and then get transferred off into a whole bunch of other instruments and the piano doesn't exist in the end or whatever. Um, but yeah, I like to start fresh with a empty canvas. Brilliant stuff. And do you have any kind of favored plugins that uh, you're playing with at the moment? Oh, well, I'm playing with the LCO Spitfire right oh, now, which I'm you. loving. It's like, it's just like, wow. I'm a huge fan of that LCO Absolutely. anyway. And I've worked with Rob um, at Union Chapel when we uh, performed, they commissioned me to do an organ piece. And oh, right. yeah, so it was such a great experience. So yeah, that I love those, especially the, the, the shorter, the shorter string. Um, I find, well, what I find good about the LCO is, is when they temp stuff up, with that kind of difficult orchestration, it's like, well, I've got virtual instruments. How on earth can I kind of demo something like that? And I think it, that's kind of unleashed that power. For yeah, me. yeah. They're, they're the sound is incredible. Like I'm like I was just like, whoa, this sounds so like there's players here. So it's it's Brilliant. yeah, it's really great. Um, and then I mean I love ivory piano. Mm -hmm. um, I love emotional piano. I love lexicon reverbs. Yeah. So I use those. Um, I mean, yeah, again, depending on the project, but there's, there's so many, there's so many, you know, to choose from. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent stuff. And Roly keyboard? Squishy? Oh yeah. I'll put this down. Um, so Roly, I was one of the first buyers for the Roly uh, Seaboard. This is the studio version. Um, and this is, yeah, I find this is really great tool to experiment. And for, for me, for synth sounds, I like to mess about with that and you can, you know, vibrato and change velocities by which way that you touch the keys. Um, it takes a little bit of time getting used to it because obviously it's quite different from your sure. traditional uh, keyboard. But I think it's a it's a really fun tool, and I know that they've got smaller blocks yeah, available now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I said to them early days that for me it wasn't uh, my interest is not replacing the need for instrumentalists. Mm. So what I'm interested in is, is being the crazy organist and doing some crazy stuff as opposed yeah. to imitating oboes and that, that right. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Excellent stuff. And do you work with um, uh, players here in, in um, this space? Uh, yeah, so I definitely will have players come in here to do recordings, whether it's sketching or recording um, parts for, for score. And then obviously the space is not, you know, crazy huge. Um, no. So I will go to like Air Studios um, or uh, whatever fits the project to do like, you know, strings and larger ensembles. And do you work with um, musicians throughout the process or do you tend to keep it till the very end? Uh, it depends. I do like, I do like to mess around with mm. musicians earlier just to, just to, you know, explore and experiment Absolutely. to find because you never know if you could come across something that's like, that just hits the tone of what you're doing and then from there that can e expand. And I find that directors also connect with those early yeah. things that you, you know, yeah. you've got to kind of make sure you record them right because once once they have them, they, they don't like to get rid of them. I know, I know. It's a tricky, it's yeah. a tricky balance. You yeah, have definitely. Um, but yeah, if you have the luxury of getting on early on the project, yeah. that that's incredible to be able to do that, especially with the director. Excellent. Yeah. And how are you finding the industry these days? Uh, you, you know, we talk about getting on projects early enough and all of that kind of stuff. I know that we, we struggle with that. How, how have you found that of late? Um, it's, it's been pretty good. The odd time you might, you know, so maybe somebody had dropped out or something went mm. wrong and then it's like crazy rush time. Yeah. Um, so you just have to, you have to deal with that. But m majority of the time it's, it's been pretty good in the post-production schedules, there's enough time in the beginning that you can develop sort of, uh, you know, templates and, and your, your basis for the project. And then once 
once you know once the spotting and everything starts everything's quite compact and you have to you know keep on top of it so as long as you have that time in the beginning to because sure. you know, the first episode of a series is always kind of your tone builder and once you've everybody agrees on on that then it's it's easier the flow is a bit e easier yeah. to um yeah to score i completely agree i find i wish i could it'll never happen i wish i could always suggest to them that they should start on the set the second one and then oh because, yeah you yeah, know yeah, you yeah, want yeah, you yeah. want the first to be you know really good so people aren't you know not coming back the following week and stuff but yeah that's the way it's got to be um absolutely yeah. now something that i'm asked all the time is about how to kind of break into the industry and you know, if there's anything that you could say to yourself when you were starting out, if you could go back in time, do you, okay. do you know what that would be? Uh, I think number one is like, you know, persevere. Like, mm. you know, if it's your if it's your passion, you have to just keep doing it no matter what. Um, I actually, yeah, I was a substitute teacher for six years in Canada while I was pursuing mm. music. So, you, so um, yeah, you just have to keep keep at it. Um, yeah, I mean, being being humble. Um, being open to working with different collaborators. I was a big fan of going to film and TV conferences and networking mm -hmm. and meeting people and developing relationships over time, which I found very helpful. Um, yeah, it, and just honing on your own sound. I think it's important to, you know, continue to write, 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 write and develop your own sound. And that doesn't take two days it takes years you know oh, so you have to put the time into it um yeah, and just make it kind of your lifestyle almost like eat yeah. breathe sleep music sort of <laughs> I completely agree yeah i think one of my big uh, advices to people is is when you pick your day job make sure it's a really awful one so uh, i know my business partner paul scraped out fridges in tesco's i worked in a place called sock shop and I think being a substitute teacher probably fits. I had spitballs. I was called names like, oh, man. And but at the end of the day, I was like, it's OK, because now I have the rest of the day free to go create music. And that I used that money to help fund going to the film and TV conferences or buying gear or recording. And for me, that was great. So, yeah, it's, I think you have to find a job that you can balance, balance that with with your music. So it's not too stressful. Brilliant stuff. Well, Carly, thank you so much for your time. Oh, it's been thank you for fantastic. coming. Great thank stuff. you. Brilliant. <laughs>